，不会很快能听到。那如果我拿进。对，你这样听得到？好，你等一下。这有人吗？这里有人吗 ？Cindy，Cindy， 太大声了。听到、哦，哈哈，早上早上好，早上好。我,我和张林到了哟，我喂喂，有人吗？喂，幺张明的那个人听到了。啊好，谢谢谢谢。怎么？要要报自己主编吗？我、哦、不要，我帮你记录好了。啊。你可以进去校园了。OK， 好。Today we're going to look at part four, which comes after part three and before part five. Part five, right? Okay, that's very easy to figure out. Today we begin looking at our negotiation in a little bit more detail. That's what we're going to do, more detail. So I want to just quickly review, very fast, so you understand, you remember the context, you remember the whole situation. Remember, when we looked at Chapter One, Part One, we were asking, "What is a negotiation? What is a negotiation?" That's a very simple question, right? And we said that negotiations happen all the time, and that there's some things you need for negotiation, like you need more than one person, you need two sides, at least two sides, and you need to have. Some difference, something that's different, but you also need to have something that's the same. Remember, so maybe you both want something. You want to buy something, and the other side wants to sell something. For example, but you need to have something different. If there's nothing different, then there's no negotiation. So, those were the basics of negotiation that we looked at, and that was very helpful. Then, in part two, we looked at goals. Now. That's a little bit more complicated, but why do we talk about goals? Because without a goal, it's very hard to know: did you succeed or did you fail in your negotiation, and how good did you do or how bad did you do? So, goals were part of negotiation in part two. Then, in part three, we talked about strategies. Remember, we mentioned what is a strategy. We talked about strategies are the big kind of overall idea, the big plan. Tactics are how you execute it, exactly what you do to get something done. So 
strategies we talked about the idea of how to make your strategy right we take the goal package from part two what's your goal package what are the things you want how much do you want them how important are they and then we ask two questions remember we ask how important is the outcome and how important is the relationship and based on those two questions we can come up with our strategy so that's where we are today we've talked about what is negotiation we've talked about goals we've talked about strategies and those are kind of all the big things it's kind of like all the big stuff now today we're gonna start with kind of the small stuff I shouldn't say it's not really small but it's kind of how do you do these things what exactly do you do to negotiate how do you do that and so we're going to begin by looking at two kinds of negotiation situations two types of situations and the first situation is today and the second situation is next week today's situation is called distributive bargaining now it's very important we all remember this name because we're going to use it all the time next week we're going to talk about distributive tactics and then after that we're going to talk about integrative bargaining integrative so two words I want to emphasize distributive and integrative distributive and integrative today's topic is distributed so because this word is so important I want everyone to practice it a few times with me because I want you to remember it and I also want you to get used to saying it and hearing me say it because I'm going to say it all day today. So please repeat after me everyone. Distributive. Distributive. Ah, very good. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time and everybody repeat after me one more time. Distributive. Distributive. Okay, everyone together. You ready? One, two, three. Distributive. Distributive. Yay, good. Okay, very good. Okay, everyone, mute your mic. Make sure your mic's muted. Yes, there we go. We need it nice and quiet. Okay, somebody's mic's open. Check your mic. Make sure you mute your mic. Yes, everybody mute your mic. Okay, there we go. Nice and quiet. I think Bill's, Bill's mic is still open. So I'm going to mute Bill there. Okay. All right, good. Now, yeah, I think everybody's learning, right, very quickly. Okay, so what I want to do is, uh, sitting here before we go into the classroom, I want to just give you a kind of general introduction to this part. Okay, somebody's microphone is open. Okay, somebody's mic is open, so somebody needs, you need to mute your mic. Everybody make sure your mic is muted. Okay, everybody mute your mic. Okay. okay, is that better? Everybody's mic's muted now? Okay, okay, we have some quiet. All right, good. So before before I go further, again, I want to just do a kind of fast introduction to part four before we go into the classroom. So today, oh. okay, so today we're going to be covering the distributive. Now, usually in English, maybe you know, you know the word distribute. Distribute means to give out or hand out or to give to someone, right? Distribute, like distribute the money, distribute the food distribute something so distribute now in negotiation this distribute is a little bit different than that and a little bit similar distributive meaning you give something to one side 
and you don't give it to the other side or rather you take it away from the other side so if you distribute something you give something to someone but you also take it away from someone you distribute it so if I have some food and I want to distribute it I have it and then I give it and I don't have it and you have it so you take it from one person give it to another person that's distributive that's the idea so in today's class we're going to be talking about distributive and we often call distributive win-lose negotiation win-lose <coughs> Now you've probably heard about win-win because we often talk about win-win in our business classes. Maybe you've never heard of win-lose. I mean, maybe your teacher talked about win-win and you think, well, that's good, win-win is great, so you never think, is there a win-lose? Today's class is all about win-lose. It's distributive bargaining. And I think many of us have learned many things in our business classes and we often hear win-win and uh, think outside the box and brainstorming but the reality in business is many many situations if not most situations are win-lose distributive it's very important for you to keep in mind how you need to emphasize in your group in your brain in your mind in your goal that you need to get your goal you need to win and sometimes you're winning means the other side has to lose and that's very normal in business my students biggest problem my students biggest challenge the hardest thing for my students to do is to grasp this idea of win-lose distributive of course everyone wants to be nice to everyone everyone wants to be friends with everyone but remember we have two questions to ask on our strategy right how important is the relationship but also how important is the outcome if the relationship is not important but the outcome is very important then a distributive bargaining situation may be very key and you just need to win you need to do everything you can to win and if that means the other side loses then they lose okay so what we're going to do now is go into the rooms and look over some of the a vocabulary to start with so everybody follow me into the first room okay somebody's testing their mic hello hello who's testing their mic hello okay everybody follow me to the first room follow me into the vocabulary room let's all go in the vocabulary room room number one Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're going to look at the vocabulary quickly. And so let's go ahead and begin. Everybody with me here? So I'm going to run through the vocabulary list and then we're going to practice a little bit later when we go to another room. But right now we're just going to run through the list. Okay, the first word is bargaining. Of course, bargaining is just means negotiation. It means talking about the details of the deal and trying to get the other side to give you what you want and for you maybe to change your position. So bargaining, it's all about the terms. Bargaining zone. Now, the bargaining zone is inside of our chapter. It ranges from the lowest acceptable price to the highest acceptable price now in our chapter we're focusing on price because price is easy to understand right but it doesn't have to be just price it could be anything it could be shipping it could be quality it could be other things not just price it could be things like contract it could be things like sales support and service but we try to keep it simple in the class and 
we focus on price. Okay, so bargaining zone. The next one is conflict. Conflict, of course, means that you have some kind of disagreement and it may be strong and you may have to have conflict with the other side, meaning you actually have some strong disagreement. Of course, in negotiation, especially distributive bargaining, we may have conflict because we want to win and we also don't want to lose. That's another key point. Deadlock. Deadlock deadlock is when you're stuck. There's no, way, there's no way to move forward. So when we're deadlocked, that means both sides cannot change what their position is. And in fact, in our example, we have an example in the dialogue, the business dialogue of deadlock, where both sides cannot change their position. So deadlock means you're stuck. Desired target. Desired target meaning this is your target. This is what you would like. Both the seller and the buyer both have a target. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes, the target. Now, the target is not necessarily the best situation, right? I mean, if I want to buy a phone and, my, and the phone costs uh, 1000 and my target is 900 then I would like to get the phone for 900 That's my target. What's my target based on? My target is based on my goal package. Remember the goal package? You don't just make up your target at any time. It's your goal package. So remember how much money do you want to spend? What features do you want to get? How important are they to you? So my desired target is what I would like. So I would like to buy the phone for 900 However, what if somebody sells me the phone for 500 Is that okay? Yeah, sure. I'm the buyer. I would always like to get a lower price. So my target is 900 but maybe I can buy it for 500 Wow, that'd be great. So that puts me 400 over my target. So this helps me measure how successful was I. I beat my target by 400 That's great. If my target's 900 can I spend more than 900 y Yes, actually I could. And we're going to talk about that. That's the resistance point, right? So a target doesn't mean it's your final option. It just means that's what you would like. That's the maximal. That's your, that's your goal package. But things could be better for you if you beat your target. Okay, discount. Everybody understands discount. It's like a sales price. It means you get something off the list price. Distributive, meaning that you give something to someone or someone gives something to you and when they give something to you they lose it or when you give something to them you lose it. So both sides cannot have the same thing at the same time. So if I give you a discount, if I give you a lower price then my money that I make goes down if I'm the seller. If you give me a lower price, then your money you make goes down if you're the seller and I'm the buyer. So this is a distributive situation. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes with some good examples. Final offer. Final offer meaning you tell the other side you don't want to make another offer. This is your last offer. You're not going to change after this. Firm. Now firm is a little bit like final. Firm means I cannot change. Now in this class, in today's class, we're going to focus a lot on price, but there are many things besides price and many of them we can say are firm. So for example, maybe I can tell you my shipping time is two weeks. That's firm. That means I cannot change from two weeks. I cannot ship faster. Now maybe my price can change, but my shipping cannot change. So final offer means everything is final. The price, the shipping, the quality, the quantity, all of the contracts, all the service agreement, all those details are final. But firm means just one part is firm. So firm and final are similar but different. Hostile. Hostile or hostile. Hostile meaning that you're having some kind of conflict. So very similar to conflict. That the other side is 
maybe giving you pressure or they're taking a very strong stand against you trying to make you change your offer very tough very hard that's hostile leftover leftover meaning what's the difference between the two sides so usually this means that I want one price and you want another price maybe I want 900 and you want 1000 well the leftover we can call that in between so between 900 and between 1000 or 950 so that $50 could be the leftover or the difference and sometimes we say that we can split the difference or keep the leftover something like this maneuver maneuver means to move around to change things and in negotiation it means to change your offer to change parts of your offer so that the other side will maybe change their offer and so this is called maneuvering we could also just say flexible or flexibility that you can change things pointless now the word pointless we can see is used in one of our dialogues pointless meaning there's no point I'm wasting my time it could be true in a distributive bargaining situation in fact it will almost always be true in a distributive bargaining situation that both sides need to negotiate very tough very hard because everything you lose the other side gains and everything you gain the other side loses so both sides are going to fight very hard to not lose anything and to gain things so this idea of pointless means I give up is pointless you're not giving me anything I don't get anything I don't want to give you anything this whole negotiation is pointless later we're gonna learn why you use a word like this when we talk about tactics raise you want to raise your offer raise your bid raise your price raise meaning to make something higher to change your offer resistance point now resistance point is a little bit like the like the goal package idea it's a little bit like the a desired target but it's a little bit more clear because resistance point means after this point you give up you just walk away you stop the negotiation so for example if we think about the buyer the buyers talking about price the buyer would always like to have a lower price and would not like to have a higher price right I'm buying something I don't want the price to go up if I'm buying the phone for 900 900 is better than 1000 1100 is worse 1200 I don't like that at all 1500 is really bad so a resistance point means at what point are you not going to negotiate anymore you just give up because it's not worth it so in my example I was talking about buying a phone I want to buy a phone and my target is 1000 if I can buy it for 900 that's even better that's wonderful but what if it's 1100 well that's really much higher than my goal my target was 900 okay but does that mean I give up does that mean I don't buy does that mean I say no does that mean I walk away does that mean it's pointless well in this case we need to think clearly what is my resistance point when will I stop and so resistance point means you stop for the buyer usually it means the price is too high there's a point where the price is so high you just say no way and you stop negotiating uh, another one is for for the seller right and that would be this price is too low right the price goes so low I'm, I don't want to sell it it's not worth selling I give up I walk away this is pointless so resistance point is very similar related to desired target or the target point only the target is what you would like to get because of your goal package and the resistance point is when you give up after that point you don't negotiate anymore you walk away it's pointless take a loss take a loss means you lose money so that you can sell your product take a loss or you lose money so that you can buy the product or service you want now probably when you negotiate with people like at the night market or at, at some kind of shop you negotiate they always say things like I can't I can't lower the price anymore I will take a loss I will lose money 
That's very normal negotiation tactic. I'll lose money. I'm already losing money. How can I sell it to you for less? I'll lose more money. So take a loss is this idea. I'm going to lose money. Maybe I'm going to lose it because I sell the price too, too low. I'm the seller. Or maybe I'm going to lose money because I'm the buyer. I buy it too high and I'm going to lose money. Target point, right? We've already talked about the target as the desired target. This is just target point. Target point, resistance point. Very similar. Ultimatum. Ultimatum. Maybe it's a little bit hard for you to say. Let me repeat it. Ultimatum. 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 Okay, an ultimatum means that this is your last chance. I'm going to give you an ultimatum, meaning I don't want to change anymore. This is the last thing I'm going to give you. You should take this or maybe there's nothing else to give you. Or this is the last thing I'm going to do to try to make it make you satisfied. So ultimatum is always is usually about the last thing or to change something the last time. Uncooperative. Uncooperative. Uncooperative means that one side of the negotiation is not cooperating, not cooperating, uncooperative. Now, this is distributive bargaining. Distributive means one side loses, one side wins. So usually both sides are going to be uncooperative. That's what distributive bargaining is all about. It's tough. Both sides want to win and don't want to give up anything. So they are uncooperative. Now usually you don't say this. You don't say you are uncooperative, but you can. You can say that the other side is being uncooperative and usually when they answer they'll say, no, I'm not. You are being uncooperative. Unyielding. Unyielding means that you're not giving up anything. So we often can tell the other side, hey, you guys are being unyielding. You should stop being unyielding. You should not be unyielding. Unyielding, of course, is very normal in distributive bargaining because you don't want to give something up. Here's a very common phrase used in distributive uh, bargaining. We cannot make this offer again. I'm sure you've heard this before. This is, this is one time. I'm going to give this to you one time just for you, special just for you. This is not for anybody else. So this is, we cannot make this offer again. This is a one time. So usually you say this because you want the other side to think, hey, uh, I'm giving you something special. I'm giving you something just for you. Now, is that true? Usually it's not true, of course, but it's a way we can try to make the other side to give in, to maybe take a loss, or maybe to not be uncooperative. I'm giving you something special. We cannot make this offer again. Okay, the last one here is wrap up a deal. Wrap up a deal. Wrap up a deal means end, come to the end. And usually it's positive. It means that we're going to agree and we're going to wrap up the deal. If you don't agree, if you cannot agree on your bargaining, you never say wrap up the deal. In that case, you just end. You say we're going to walk away or we're going to end this. Uh, but wrap up a deal means to take the final points, the final details, and to finish them. Okay, very good. So that's our vocabulary. And what I want to do next is go into the introduction. But now is 10.04, so we're going to take a 10-minute break. And then we'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay, so everyone take a break. I'm going to go to the next room. And I'm going to sit down for 10 minutes and then we'll be back. So if you have to finish your breakfast or something, then go ahead. Okay, so everybody go to room one, uh, room two, I'm sorry, room two, sit down and then we'll take a 10 minute break. Here we go, over to room two. All right, so the introduction is quite straightforward, but it's really hard for me to overemphasize, hard for me to tell you that this is how important this really is. This is probably the biggest problem people have in overcoming when they negotiate. And that is everybody is kind of easygoing, soft, uh, want to get along, want to make friends, want to kind of 
win-win situation. But like I said, in negotiation, the more common situation is win-lose is a distributive bargaining situation. And so in our introduction today, this is what we're going to be talking about. And that is distributive bargaining is win-lose. And I think the best example for this that's easy to understand is a basketball game. In a basketball game, uh, if you have the ball and you run down the court and you make the, 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 you get the ball into the hoop, you get two points. So you get two points. What happens to the other team? What does the other team get when you get two points? Well, they don't get two points. Now, if you get two points and they don't get two points, and you say, well, that's okay. I didn't hurt them. I just get two points. But that's exactly the same as if you take away two points from them. Yes, you can get two points and they don't get two points, or you can get no points and you can subtract two points from them. It's the same thing, right? So when you gain two points, yes, you gain something, but the other side loses something. You, this is really a little bit hard to, I mean, it's easy to understand, but I think it's really hard for people to take the heart to really believe. So I get the basket, I'm playing basketball, I get a basket, I, I, I get two points, I'm, I'm winning. That doesn't mean the other side's losing, but it does mean they're losing. Every time you gain, they lose. And every time they gain, you lose. There's no other way to see this. It's a very binary, one-to-one uh, -one relationship. For every point you gain, it's exactly the same as if the other team lost a point. In win-lose negotiation, uh, this is exactly what we're talking about. Every time one side gains something, the other side loses something. Every time you get your price lower as the buyer, the seller loses money. Every time the seller gets a higher price, the buyer must spend more and they lose that money. Now, is that money important to you? Is that money part of your goal package? What are your goals? That's very complicated and that's very important. But in any case, in distributive bargaining, the idea is you're going to win by making the other side lose. And when we play our RPG game, this is how you're going to win. Uh, you're going to need to really try your best in many cases, not all cases, it depends on the situation, it depends on the goal package, it depends on the questions. How important is the relationship? How important is the outcome? It all depends on that. But the biggest problem my students have, the biggest problem everyone has when they begin negotiating is they feel hmm, win-lose is rare and win-win is common. I should just like work together and we all can win and that is not true. Working together in a win-win situation is really the rare, very unusual negotiation situation. Much more common, I would say 90% and higher is this distributive bargaining, win-lose, distributive, like a basketball game. In a distributive bargaining situation, the two sides have goals that are opposite. That is, I want a lower price, you want a higher price. I want a fast delivery time, you want a long delivery time. I want higher quality, you would like to have lower quality. This is opposites, and there's no way to get around that. Think about uh, an auction, like if you buy something on Yahoo Auctions and you set the price. If you get your lower price, then the other side loses. If you don't get your price, somebody else gets a price, then you lose. So it's very clear. You, not everyone can get everything they want. It's just that simple. In a distributive bargaining, it's important to win. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, if you don't win, you lose, right? That's very simple. But what are the key points to winning? How do you win? What are the things you need to pay attention to? Well, the first thing you need to pay attention to is you need to be very clear, I must win. 
Okay, that's number one. You cannot think, ah, oh, we'll take it easy, we'll just see what they say, and we'll try to give them something to make them happy. No. The problem with this is, maybe you would like to be nice, and you would like to give the other side something, but the other side is very clear. They're like, okay, I win. Everything I win, you lose. Everything I lose, you win. So they tell you things that you want to hear. They say, okay, yes, we give you, we'll give you $5 if you can give us a faster delivery time. And it sounds good, but actually, they're not telling you the whole truth. Maybe they're telling you they're lowering their price, but actually, that is not a low price. Maybe they're telling you that they're decreasing or making the shipping time faster, but actually, that's a slow time. So it's very hard to know. If you're being honest and the other side is not being honest, it's going to be hard for you to win. And if you are trying to be honest, then it's going to be easy for the other side to win because they just lie to you. They just trick you. They just fool you. So when we're talking about distributive negotiation, distributive bargaining, the key thing you need to remember is your secret information must stay secret. Your secret information must stay secret. Now, that's a little bit obvious, right? Secret information is secret, but you'd be surprised. Lots of people just tell their secrets out. What do they tell? They tell things like their goal package. They tell things too clearly. They tell things like the lowest price they're willing to accept. And then the other side knows that and they take advantage of that. Why would they take advantage of it? Because it's a distributive bargaining situation. They want to win. So today we're going to talk a lot more about your secret information and your public information. But first, we're going to practice some vocabulary in our dialogue. So everybody follow me to the next room where we're going to practice some dialogue. Okay, follow me. Let's go to the next dialogue. Come on over here, Emma. Okay. All right. Emma? Yes. Yeah. How do I sound to you? Is my microphone clear? Um, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Paul, if I'm still not clear to you, Paul, maybe you need to uh, restart and enter again because I think your connection has a little bit of a problem. Or lower your audio quality is also another way. It's good now. Okay, my fault then. Okay, good. All right, so this pizza example is very clear, right? Very simple. I get the pizza, you don't get the pizza. You get the pizza, I don't get the pizza. If we both get half the pizza, we're both not happy. We're both hungry. So this is very normal in business. In fact, as I said, more than 90% probably of negotiations are like this. I win, you lose. You win, I lose. Or we both lose. Nobody's happy. And you could say something like, Professor Warden, maybe you can be half happy. If you get half the pizza, won't you be half satisfied? And the answer is in business, no. Because if my business is not making enough money, I cannot say I made half of enough money. If I don't make enough money, I close. I go out of business. I fail. So it doesn't work that way. You cannot just say, well, just compromise and take half. So distributive bargaining is very, very uh, normal, very key. Okay, I think that's Janice is having a problem with her mic. Okay. All right, now we're going to do the business dialogue. So let me look for uh, Andreas Drexler. Yeah, Andy. Andy, Hello, yes. Professor. Andy, just call you Andy is good. Okay, Andy, okay. so let me see. I'll be Alex and you be Fred. Okay. Okay. Our offering price is twenty-five fifty USD per unit is firm. Under your lower price, we can decree. This is our bottom line. There is no flexibility on this issue. To be honest, we cannot sell this product in the market at this price. Quality production is our goal, and that costs more. Um, but this price just cannot, cannot compete in the market. We do not have any space to maneuver. This is really the lowest we can offer. If you don't agree to a 20% discount, we cannot make progress. 
Okay, great, Andy. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, that's really, you can see, it sounds like me and Andy are almost fighting, right? I keep saying no, and what does Andy say? He says no, Every, everything is no, right? That's a, exactly the way a distributive bargaining goes. Okay, let me now look for Paul. Okay, we'll continue, and let me see. My next line here is, I'm Alex, and you're Fred. <laughs> We would lose money just on the production at that price. This is the most we can, this is most we can offer. There is simply no way we can give you a discount. If you're going to be so unyielding, this negotiation will quickly reach a deadlock. If you don't accept this offer, we will have to withdraw it. That may be the result. We have other buyers who are very interested in this product. This is an ultimatum. We cannot accept. We can simply find a plus buyer. Okay, great, Paul. Thank you. Now it sounds like me and Paul are arguing, right? Paul says no. I say no. We just keep saying no. That's exactly the way a distributive bargaining works. When you go to work and when you have a job, this is often the way you'll hear things. I can't go lower. I can't go higher. I can't give you what you want. Okay, let me move on then and see if Vivian is here. Come yeah, here. today I'm here. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so the next word is conflict. 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 Uh, I do not want to have a conflict over this issue. Uh, Hello, I'm here. Ah, Roy is here, okay. Yeah. So, Roy, the word is deadlock. Uh, I don't want to have a deadlock. Don't I don't want to have a deadlock, okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Joseph, is Joseph here? Okay. Now Roy, you had some problem with your microphone. Are you using a headset? I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm using Might want to get a you. I think you need because, to because uh, me and Joseph are using one home. Okay, so you need to get two headsets and use the line together. Okay. Hello, uh -huh. professor. Yes. Um. Okay, so I'm just saying, Joseph, you need to. Joseph and Roy, you both need to get headsets and not use the open microphone, right? So Joseph is next. So Joseph, let me see. Uh, the word is desired target. Desired target. Desired target. Oh, Joseph is not here. I thought Joseph and Roy are together. I'm here. The answer is right. The sales desired target is way higher than. Okay, so. Yeah, don't so hear remember, you. Cindy, final offer. Oh, uh, is that your final offer? Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, Sally. Yeah. Okay, firm. 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 Our price for this product is firm. Our price for this product is firm. Okay, good. Thank you. Emma. Hostile. Hostile. You are acting very hostile. Okay, very good. Thank you. Why does everybody... Yeah, okay, very good. Let me see. At this price, we will take a loss. Okay, next is target point. Everybody read with me. Target point. Target point. Target point. Target point. Target point. Target point. <laughs> this is not everybody. I need everybody except Janice. Target point. Target point. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody, I don't know who, but somebody's target point. 
Okay. Number 18. Ultimatum. 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 Everybody, try with me. Ultimatum. <laughs> ultimatum. Good, good, good. Our ultimatum is that you accept the shipping terms or we will find another buyer. Okay, good. The next one is uncooperative. Everybody, uncooperative. 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 Try again. Uncooperative. Uncooperative. Oh, very good. Okay, good. I don't I don't want to be co -op uncooperative, but we really cannot lower our price. Okay, the next one is unyielding. So everybody unyielding. 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 Try again everyone. Unyielding. Unyielding. Okay, very good. The next one is a phrase. We cannot make this offer again. This is very common phrase. So, are you ready? After me. We cannot make this offer again. Okay, everybody, you ready? One, two, three. We cannot make this offer again. We cannot make this offer again. Okay. Okay, the next one and the last one is... Well, let me read a sentence first. Let me see. Right. If you do not accept this offer now, we cannot make this offer again. Okay, the last one is wrap up a deal. So everybody after me. Wrap up a deal. Wrap up a deal. Okay, very good. My boss mailed me this morning that we must wrap up a deal before the weekend. Okay. All right, so I think it's time for a break. We're going to take a break, and then we're going to go over the follow-up. Okay, so I'm going to go to... Okay, everyone, come on up here. Now, the first, the first picture I want to show you is this very simple picture here of the scale. This is what we call a scale, right? The balance. Now... The balance is a very simple picture, but it does have a point. The point is, in a distributive bargaining situation, one side gets something, the other side loses something, just like this scale here. If you get more, then one side weighs more, the other side weighs less. And the example here is the pizza, right? One piece of pizza goes to one side, the other side loses a piece of pizza. So that's very simple. Pizza. It's called pizza logic, right? It's the science of eating a pizza. The only problem is every time I have class on this, I get hungry to want a pizza. So you eat a piece of pizza, somebody else can't eat it, so they lose it. That's very, very simple. I just keep saying this over and over again because when we do our RPG it's going to be very important that you get your brain, you get your thinking, you get your behavior in this thinking, in this pattern. I've got to try to win. I've got to try to get as much as I can and everything I give up, every time I give something up it's actually a chance that I could lose something. Okay so Let's begin today. We're going to begin using the vocabulary that we're going to use the rest of the semester. Things like buyer and seller. Because today we begin getting much more specific, don't we? Very, very clear about actually doing the negotiation. So, buyer and seller. So for the buyer in a distributive negotiation, you're going to have to think of about your first thing, which is, I'm going to buy something. I need to buy something. I need to know what is my target point. That is, what is the price, or what is the shipping, or what is the quality that is my target? What is it that I want? And how do you know what you want? Well, remember, you made a goal package, right? The goal package. So you need to think clearly, what is my target? Now, are you going to get your target? No, you may not get your target. You may get more, you may get less. If you get more than your target, that's good for you. If you get less, then that's not good for you. So how much less is okay? 
that less is called your resistance point. Resistance point. That is, you cannot go less than that, right? So for a buyer, your target is a price, like let's say 100. Your resistance point is somewhere over 100. If you're a buyer, you can spend more than 100, although you don't like it. How high can you go? 150, 200, 300, 400, 1,000? Can you go that high? The answer is no. You have to stop somewhere. Where do you stop? You just won't go higher. That's called your resistance point. So the target is what you would like. And the resistance point is you cannot go beyond. So for the buyer, this means that you would like to buy at a lower price and a higher price is not good and you must have a point where you will stop. It's too high. I'm sure this has happened to you before. I'm sure you've gone, you've gone shopping and you look around and you see some prices and even though the product, you would like it, even though you think you want it, you go, no, that price, that's just too much. I can't, I can't do that. That means it's past your resistance point. What about the seller? The seller also has this target and also has a resistance point, but of course it's the opposite direction, right? A seller would like to sell for more. A higher price is better. A lower price is worse. The seller has a target price. Can they go lower? Can they sell for less? Yes. How much less? Well, a little bit less, a lot less. If I want to sell for 100, but then I can sell it for 90, I make less money. Can I sell it for 80, I make less money. Can I sell it for 70, I make less money. Can I sell it for zero, I make no money, right? So when's, when do I stop? When do I say no more? That's my, that's my resistance point. Now, both of these things, there's a key idea. Your target and your resistance must stay secret must stay secret this is a key very important point must stay secret so follow me to the next slide over here and on the next slide we can see a little bit more whoops here I come now these these pictures here are really great they really make the situation clear So in this case, what we have is kind of the beginning of the negotiation. On here we can see that we have the buyer's target point and we have the buyer's resistance point. The target point is 9,000, the resistance point is 12,000, right? So the buyer's target is 9,000, that means I want to buy the product for 9,000. Can I buy it for 10,000? Yes. Can I buy it for 11,000? Yes. Can I buy it for 12,000? I can buy it for 12,000. How about 12,001? No, it cannot be more than 12,000. If the price is $1 more, if it's one cent more than 12,000, that is my resistance point. I cannot do it. So this is the target and the resistance for the buyer. And it must stay secret, right? Why must it stay secret? Why is secret so important? Well, if my resistance point is 12,000 and I don't keep it secret, I just tell people, you know, I would like 9,000, but I cannot spend more than 12,000. If you tell people that, if you say, I would like 9,000, but I cannot go more than 12,000, then everyone would change their price to be 12,000, right? If I know this, if this information is public, you know that I have $12,000 in my pocket, you know that I can spend $12,000, then you will make the price $12,000, right? Let's look here at the one thing that's not secret. There's one piece of information that's not secret, and that's the seller's asking price, or what we can also call the list price. The list price here is $11,000. $11,000 is the seller's asking price. That means if I go to the catalog, or if I go to the website, or if I call, they tell me the price is $11,000. Now, this is something I think we're all very familiar with, the list price, the asking price. However, there are cases 
where even this information is not public. Even this information is not public. For example, let me give you an easy example. If you want to go join a health club, an exercise club in Taiwan, in China, in America, it's always the same. I don't know how it is in Germany or Austria. I think it's the same in the UK. But it's very strange. You go and you ask. I say, I want to join your health club. How much does it cost? They often say, oh, well, you know, what do you do? What's your job? How many times do you want to come every week? What would you like to exercise? They don't tell you the price. They purposely try to keep the price secret. They don't have a list price. And the reason is, why? Because they want to learn your resistance point. Or maybe you want to buy a house. This is also very common when you buy property. So if you want to go buy a house in Taiwan or in Shanghai, very often the price is unclear. You can ask for the price, but the other side will not give you a very clear price. Why do they do that? because they want to first learn your resistance point. In other words, if your resistance point is 12,000, then the price is 12,000. So it's normal, normally, the public information is the seller's asking price, or what we call the list price. That's normal, but sometimes, sometimes it is also true that it's not easy to find that price, or that price is hidden. And why would the seller hide it? Because they want to make their price all the way up to the resistance price of the buyer to get the maximum, to get the most. I suspect the same is true if you want to buy like very expensive jewelry or if you want to buy like an airplane, something really big. Often very big items do not have a clear list price. And the reason is, we want to talk to you first. We want to discuss it. We want to understand you better. Why? Because we want to know what is your resistance point. Okay, but normally, mostly, usually, and in our RPG, RPG game, our simulation, the seller's asking price will usually be public. So that is the list price. There is a list price, everybody knows it. Now, the list price is $11,000 in this example. That's the seller. The buyer has a resistance point of 12,000. He cannot go higher than 12,000. And his target is 9,000. So he would like to be 9,000 or lower. Lower would be better, right? How much lower? Uh, more lower is more better, right? Zero would be great. Of course, that's not possible. And how did he make 9,000? It was his goal package. Okay, let's look at the next slide here. I'm gonna go down and then back up to this next slide. There we go, this next one here, okay. So this next slide adds a little bit more information. What do we see in this slide here? We add more data from the seller. So remember, this, we began with the seller's asking prices, public information, $11,000, 11,000. We also have the buyer's resistance point, 12,000. Cannot buy more than 12,000. We also have the buyer's target. The target is 9,000. <clears> now we're gonna add the seller's resistance point. That means what's the lowest price the seller will sell for? What's the lowest price the seller will sell for? And in this case, that's $7,000. $7,000. So, now we're getting more information, right? But usually we don't know this. We only know my information. I only know my information. If I'm a buyer, I only know the buyer. If I'm the seller, I only know the seller. But look at this chart here. This is very interesting. If we look at the seller's resistance point, 7,000, that means the lowest price the seller will sell, the lowest is 7,000. He keeps this information secret. Why does, the, why does the seller keep this secret? Because if the buyer knew, if the buyer knows 7,000 is the lowest, then what will the buyer offer? Hmm, if I'm the buyer and I know that the lowest price you can sell for is 7,000, then what will I ask? I will ask for the price of 7,000. 
And of course, the seller does not like 7,000 because that's the lowest he can offer. He would like to get more, right? So it's very important to keep this information secret. Your target and your resistance must stay secret. Now, of course, for the seller, you must have your asking price. That's public. You cannot help that. Usually, you keep that public. But everything else must stay secret. You don't want the other side to see your secrets. Okay, follow me over to the next chart over here, the next figure, everybody. Let's come on over to this one. Yes, here we go. Okay, so now we have a little bit more information here, right? We've got the buyer's resistance point, 12,000. We have the seller's resistance point, 7,000. Between 7,000 and 12,000, this is called the bargaining range. The lowest the price can go is 7,000. The highest the price can go is 12,000. So this is the bargaining range. Inside here, somewhere in here, we're going to make a deal. Somewhere. It may be 7,000, it may be 12,000, it may be 11,000, it may be 9,000, maybe 8,000, maybe 8,100. So everything is possible. But one key point. If the price goes up towards 12,000, up, then that means the seller makes more, the buyer makes less. And if it goes down towards 7,000, down towards 7,000, right? 10,000, 9,000, 8,000, 7,900, 7,800, as it goes down, then the seller will make less and the buyer will make more. This is distributive bargaining's main idea. One side gains as the other side loses. One side gets more as the other side gets less. One side wins and one side loses. Okay, so we look at this picture here. I have a couple arrows at the ends, right? Buyer's offer is too low is under 7,000. Seller's offer too high is over 12,000. Yes, I understand. But let's look at the other arrow here in the middle, the arrow that says buyer gives up too much. Buyer gives up too much. Everybody see that? That's really important. So what does this say? This tells us an interesting idea. Let's say that the seller's target is 10,000. That means the seller would like to get 10,000. His list price is 11,000. That's his public information, but he still has a secret. His secret is actually he would like to get 10,000. I mean, 11,000 would be great. He'd make more, right? He loves that. 12,000 would be good too. He would like he would like 13,000. He would like 100,000. He would like more cuz if he sells it higher, he makes more. But his goal package, his target is 10,000. So his opening price, his list price, his public information is 11,000. Why 11,000 and not 10,000 because he knows that the buyer will negotiate the bar the, he'll try to bargain down he'll try to push the price down so don't begin at 10,000 begin at 11,000 right begin higher and now the buyer says okay well maybe I'll give you 10,500 and what does the seller say oh 10,500 good I will take 10,500 we have a deal we agree but if the price is 10,500, what happened? The buyer paid too much. The buyer paid too much. Why did the buyer pay too much? Number one, because it is above the target, right? The buyer's target is 9,000 based on the goal package. So not good. But more important is the buyer paid more than the seller was actually targeting. The seller would be okay with 10,000. If you had said 10,000, the seller would have said, deal, good deal, I take it. But you offered 10,500. That's even more than the target. 
If you paid 11,000, that's even more. So you lose even more. So you see how it's a little bit tricky, right? You don't know, if you're the buyer, you don't know the secret information of the seller. You don't know it. 10,000 is okay. You don't know that. So you offer 10,500 and that is $500 more than you needed to do. You lost 500. The seller is happy to make 500. Okay, the same is true the other way around, right? This works both ways for the buyer and the seller. So in the next picture, in the next figure, we can see that we have all the information here now. We have the the bargaining range 7,000 to 12 thousand we also can see the sellers resistance point seven thousand and the buyers resistance point twelve thousand we can see the sellers asking price eleven thousand and we can see the buyers first offer that's the beginning eight thousand why did the why did the buyer begin at eight thousand not at nine thousand because he knows the seller will push him up will make his price go up so he wants to begin below under his target. His target is 9,000. He would like to go lower. So he begins at 8,000, lower than 9,000. So you see, everybody begins lower or higher, depending if you're the buyer or the seller. Okay, so this last figure here is all the information. Of course, you, you will not have this information. When we play our game, when we do our RPG, you will only have your information. But you must be careful to keep your information secret. You must keep it secret. And of course, when you negotiate, everyone says things like, Oh, let me be honest. I will honestly tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. This is, this is my cost. I cannot go below my cost. And that's a way to say, I'm telling you my secret information. But really? Are you telling me your secret information? Is that true? And of course, the answer is no. That's usually not true. When you go to bargain with someone and they say, oh, I'm going to lose money. This is below my cost. Of course, is that true? And the answer is no, that's not true. They're trying to fool you and trick you to say, this is my secret information. But no, that's not true. Secret information must stay secret. You cannot tell it to the other side. Of course, you can, you can fool them. You can tell them, oh, this is my secret information. But is that true? I hope not, because you don't want to give away your secret information. Okay, so that's the main point for today. I want to summarize. Key, right? The key points. Distributive ne negotiation is all about win-lose. And I know that sounds terrible, because we often in business say, hey, we should all win-win. And, and yes, that's, that's true. I'm not saying that's not true. But, you know, the way most negotiations are. The reality of most situations is you really need to negotiate tough. You need to be hard. And that means you need to think about every time I give up something, the other side gains something. If you feel this way, if you think this way, if you act this way, you will win more negotiations. You'll get more. And that's, that's, that's just the reality. It's harder. But if you're a nice, if you're always friendly, and if you always think win-win, the problem is win-win only works if the other side is also win-win. If you're win-win, but the other side is win-lose, you're going to lose, and they're going to win. That's the problem. You don't know. Should you trust them or not trust them? In distributive negotiation, in distributive bargaining, we don't trust the other side. We just try to win as much as we can. We try to get as much as we can. We keep our secrets secret. So that's point number two. Your, your target and your resistance, you must keep secret. Your target and your resistance, you must keep secret. If you don't keep it secret, then the other side is going to be able to take advantage of that and beat you. Win more. Get more than you get. Okay, so that's it. We're going to wrap up here. I'm going to go to the next room. I'm going to go to the next room, and I'm going to uh, go over the homework and the quiz if you want to. You don't have to. Only if you want to. If you don't want to, you can end class here. 
So uh, I'll say goodbye to you now, and I'm going to go to the next room, and anybody who wants to follow me can, and we'll spend maybe 10 minutes talking about the homework. Okay, go to the next room.